Hey people! Hi! Coach Miller Light here. We have cinnamon again today. We're back! Special treat! So exciting! So we're picking up today where we left off on the last call that we had, or call, I'm so old school, video. <laughs> and it was so meaty, right? That that track 67 of CWG book one on Audible was so meaty. That's we couldn't get said. to all of it. Oh! <laughs> So we're picking up at the end of track 67 and going into half of track 68. So where it started it, where we're picking up from is a very important statement that you, this has to be addressed. Right? You, Absolutely. You would you like to? Yeah. Okay. I always get what I create and I'm always creating. There's a lot to unpack right there. Right? Always. This is what always says. <laughs> I am, I always unpack. get what I create and I am always <laughs> creating. Goddess does not make a judgment about the creations I conjure. Goddess simply empowers me to conjure more and more yes. and more. <laughs> if I don't like what I just created, choose again. Right. Choose again. Ding ding. Goddess' job is to always give me that opportunity. I am telling Goddess that I haven't always gotten what I wanted. Right? How could this be? <laughs> Goddess is here to tell me that I have always gotten what I have called for. Right. We learned in the last segment that we're calling things forth with our attention. Right. I'm call I'm, I am getting what I'm calling forth. I'm just becoming more aware of what I am calling forth. Right. My life is always a result of my thoughts about it. Right. Yes. So including my obvious creation that I seldom get what I choose. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. In this present instance, I see myself as the victim in the situation. The truth right? is, I no longer choose that job. That's right? why I lost it, because I no longer chose that job. Right? I stopped getting up in the morning in anticipation and began getting up with dread. That's why that happened. Right? I stopped feeling happy about my work and began feeling resentment. I even began fascinating about doing something else. <laughs> Ooh. So I think these things mean nothing. I misunderstand yeah. my power. Right? My life proceeds out of my intentions for it. What is my intention now? Mm -hmm. Do I intend to prove my theory that life seldom brings me what I choose? Or do I intend to demonstrate who I really am and who Goddess is? Yes. So simply acknowledge the truth when I hear it and move towards it. Acknowledge the truth. These are like light posts that you call. Yeah. Acknowledge the truth when I see it. Right. And move towards it. Right. There's no need to incriminate against myself. Simply notice what I have been choosing and choose again. Yes. What can I expect? I was told from an early age I am bad. Right. I accept that I am born in sin. Feeling guilty is a learned response. I've been told to feel guilty about myself for things I did before I could even do anything. Right? I've been taught to feel shame for being born less than perfect. This alleged state of imperfection in which I said to have come into this world is what religionists have the gall to call original sin. Ooh! <laughs> And it is original sin, but not mine. Right? It is the first sin to be perpetrated upon me by a world which knows nothing of God if it thinks that goddess would or could create anything imperfect. Right? Some of our religionists have built up whole theologies around this misconception, and this is what it is literally, a misconception. For anything I can see, all that for which I give life is perfect. Right? I like that. Perfect. Right. I choose perfect. perfection. A perfect reflection of perfection itself made in the image and likeness of Goddess. Yes. Yes. What great points that I get what I create and I'm always creating. There is no not creating. And what, I, what I'm hearing in all this is all this is pretty basic and simple when I get how it goes. Right. When I know that I am always creating. And that even when I, it's so interesting because even when I have the thought of, oh, life seldom gives me what I choose, that's a creative thought. And that thought is my attention and it's calling forth the experience of life seldom giving me what I choose even though life has everything necessary to give me everything I've ever desired. And that the, the makers, position here 
isn't to sit back and judge what I call forth, but just to allow me to conjure more and more and more. And through that, figure out how it goes and how it is that I am calling things forth. And I really love this part about how your life is the result of your intention, right? What is my intention? Making sure that I have an intention. Do I even have an intention? Right? If I don't have a conscious intention, I'm still intending by default. Right. So a conscious intention would be a pretty good idea here. You know, recently we said we're gonna intend epic, epic fun. fun. <laughs> Woo! And you in? Yeah, baby. Epic fun. Desiree's in. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Woo! Shout out Desiree on the 33rd. So understanding what this thing, you know, I call it this thing, and it, it's creative. Understanding that my words call forth. They're yes. one of the tools with which we call forth. So then trying to, intending to be more aware of what I'm speaking of and speak of that which feels good. Anything cinnamon. Yeah, epic fun feels good. Epic fun I feels love great. epic fun. Yes. It, we're here and we're creating anyways. Right. So. Now right. we're becoming aware of what we're creating. Our life proceeds out of our thoughts. We're getting a hold of the thoughts. We're getting a hold of the lips. Yeah. And we're creating on purpose. Yes. So I might as well have some epic fun. Right? <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> and have what we choose. And, and when we find ourselves in a position where we are choosing something that we weren't aware of. Right? So what? No big deal. Yeah. Choose again. Right. Great point. Great point. Thanks for bringing that up. Right? Yeah. Just choose again. I, I hear choose again, punk. <laughs> okay. You got a little, little swag talk in there. But instead of being upset about it, you know, Neil Donald says, well, I feel chagrined and embarrassed. And the maker says, well, no wonder you choose that. I like this point. No wonder you choose that because you lived most of your life feeling guilty. In fact, you were supposedly guilty before you were even born. You were guilty before you ever even did anything. Right. So no wonder you're choosing that, but we don't have to choose that. That's a learned response. We could choose something else. We could have ourselves in a place of understanding how the universe works, have enough late posts in place that I can say, okay, well, I no longer choose that. And easy peasy, I just simply choose this. Just move on over to what it is that i do choose oh here you hear this song this is great make a wish baby make a list of the things i'll do for you what a great point to use the written word and that's a great point for us to finish on here today absolutely i like the passages because they get me to my pen my pen and my notebook and then you know i might actually write something else too but regardless of, of if I'm passaging, it makes sense to put the pen to the paper because it's creative, it's calling forth, and it has more creative energy. It takes more, more energy, more attention to write it than think it or say it. Yeah. So make a list, baby, of the things I'll do for you. Make a wish, love will make it come true. Love is the answer. Love is the answer. All right, people, stay tuned. <laughs>